assisted by Deacon Joe. In keeping with the spirit of welcome, we invite you to greet one another. Tonight we celebrate the fifth Sunday in Ordinary Time and we begin our worship with number 303, Gather Us In, number 303. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Lord Jesus, your word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Yeah. 
Let us pray. Give your family safe, O Lord, with unfailing care, that relying solely in the hope of heavenly grace, they may be defended always by your protection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. In the year of King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord seated on a high and lofty throne, with the train of his garments filling the temple. Seraphim were stationed above. They cried to one another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. All the earth is filled with his glory. At the sound of that cry, the frame of the door shook and the house was filled with smoke. Then I said, Woe is me, I am doomed. For I am man of unclean lips, living among people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, holding an ember that he had taken with tongs from the altar. He touched my mouth with it and said, See, now that this has touched your lips, your wickedness is removed, your sin purged. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? Who will go for us? Here I am, I said, send me the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God.
reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. I am reminding you, sisters and brothers, of the gospel I preached to you, which you indeed received and in which you also stand, though it, it is also you who will be saved if you hold fast to the word I preached to you, unless you believed it in vain. For I handed on to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. After that, he appeared to me more than a hundred and a hundred, five hundred brothers at once, more of them still living, some have fallen asleep. After that, he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to the one born abnormally, he appeared to me. For I am least of the apostles, not fit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace to me was not, has not been ineffective. Indeed, I have toiled harder than all of them. Not I, however, but the grace of God that is with me. Therefore, whether it be I or they, so we preach and so you believed. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. While the crowd was pressing in on Jesus and listening to the word of God, he was standing by the lake of Gennesaret. He saw two boats there alongside the lake. The fishermen had disembarked and were washing their nets. Getting into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, he asked him to put out a short distance from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the crowds from the boat. After he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into deep water and lower your nets for a catch. Simon said in reply, Master, we've worked hard all night and have caught nothing, but at your command, I will lower the nets. When they had done this, they caught a great number of fish and their nets were tearing. They signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. They came and filled both boats so that the boats were in danger of sinking. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at the knees of Jesus and said, Depart from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For astonishment at the catch of fish they had made seized him and all those with him, and likewise James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were partners of Simon. Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on you will be catching men. When they brought their boats to the shore, they left everything and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. O oh Lord Jesus Christ. Dear brothers and sisters, have you ever worked hard for something, then finally achieved it? Maybe it was a position at work, or a grade on an exam. Perhaps it was a new house or a new car. Of course, you will feel good about that accomplishment, and we're right to feel that way. 
But what if God asked us to give that up for something better? Now imagine Simon Peter in the gospel we just read. No, he was a fisherman, and his boat meant everything to him. Even though he failed the night before, he probably was good at what he did. The gospel tells us that the boat belonged to him. So he was successful enough to buy his own boat. That boat represented security. That boat represented his livelihood. Maybe every time Simon Peter looked at that boat, his heart must have filled with contentment. And then something changes. Our blessed Lord enters into his life and invites him to leave it all behind and follow him. But unfortunately, the boat couldn't go with him. This was a crucial moment for Simon Peter. He had seen the miraculous catch of fish. He had experienced the presence of our blessed Lord. This was someone unlike anyone he had ever met. He's so moved that he falls to his knees and tells our blessed Lord, Depart from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. But Jesus doesn't live. Instead, he does something much more beautiful and much more challenging. He invites Simon Peter to leave everything behind and follow him. Now he's inviting Simon to share in his life. He's asking him, are you willing to leave everything behind for me? I promise you that you will experience a happiness you can't imagine. Will you take the risk? Simon Peter says yes. So he and his fishing buddies leave everything behind and follow Jesus. Now they recognized that they were leaving their boats, but they had found Jesus. So Simon Peter teaches us a great lesson today. When we leave everything for Jesus, we find even more. When we lose something of our personal security, we may feel like we're losing control, but it's worth it. Because when we leave everything to follow Jesus, we find so much more. Our hearts are set free, and Christ becomes our life. Now, dear friends, when we examine the lives of the main characters of our readings this Sunday, the prophet Isaiah, St. Paul, Peter, about their response to God's call, something very remarkable comes to light, namely the feeling of personal unworthiness, a willingness to leave everything behind and answer the call. This is what qualifies a person to answer God's call. Our Lord does not call the qualified, but qualifies the called. It is only God's grace that supplies what is lacking in our ability to answer God's call. Hence, St. Paul acknowledged, I am what I am only by the grace of God. Therefore, we need to see ourselves as humble children of God and submit ourselves to Him so that His grace will lift us up and strengthen us to answer whenever and wherever he asks us to go. So that, like the prophet Isaiah, we can say, I am willing to leave everything, Lord. Here I am. Send me. In his inaugural homily on April 24, 2005, Pope Benedict XVI said beautifully that, If we want to follow Christ and let him enter our lives, we lose nothing. Only in our friendship with our Lord do the doors of life open wide. We should not be afraid of Christ. He takes nothing away. He gives us everything. When we give ourselves to him, we receive a hundredfold in return. When we open wide the doors to Christ, we will find true life. When we learn to give and share ourselves is when we open our hands in receiving great blessings from our generous God. Now, even though most of us can't simply get rid of all material possessions, it's always good to ask ourselves if we have more than we need. 
Are there some things that we should give up to follow Christ more closely? Now, there is a story of a mother who gave her older son a bottle of soda, telling him to share it equally with his brother, drinking straight from the bottle. You know, the mother saw him empty its contents. Didn't I tell you to share the bottle equally with your brother? You know, the ignorant, indignant mother said, Why did you drink the whole bottle? Well, mom, he replied, I couldn't help it because my share was the lower part. So disregarding the different parts of our shares, maybe we have some extra things in our lives that we need to give up and share with others. Could we, you know, as family, decide to save some of our stuff and donate it to help the needy? On the other side, have we turned our jobs into idols? Obviously, we can't just leave it. But maybe God wants us to put some order in our lives and spend more time with our families. Simon Peter left his boat behind. He left his security blanket for something better. He left it behind for someone better. Our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, in the Holy Mass today, we're going to receive the real presence of our blessed Lord in the Eucharist. And there's a time of silence after communion. Oh, let's use that well. Let's ask Jesus, Lord, show me if there's something that's holding me back from following you more closely. And give me the strength to leave it behind to follow you. When we leave everything for Jesus and learn how to share with others, we receive hundred times more. We receive the joy and happiness and the freedom that only our blessed Lord, Jesus, can give. Please all stand, and together we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through Him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate with the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son whom by the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world. Amen. Gathered as a family united in baptism and faith, let us bring our prayers before the Lord. For the church, may her mission of evangelization lead to strengthening of God's presence in the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For our government leaders, may the gospel message of hope and redemption for all bring peace to violent lands. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. In this celebration of National Marriage Week, may the Holy Spirit inspire us to focus on building a culture of life and love that begins with supporting and promoting marriage and family. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. For those who deal with physical and psychological illness, may Christ the healer bring them relief and give them strength by what they need and endure, to endure. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. 
for young people in our parish community discerning a vocation to the priesthood of religious life. May they be confident in love and support and prayers. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear God. our prayer. For those who have died in the light of Christ, especially Ronald R. Ware, may the Lord welcome him into the eternal rest of the heavenly kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear God. our prayer. For the intentions in our parish intention prayer book, and for our parishioners for whom this Mass is offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, hear the prayers of your people and tend to the needs we place before you according to your holy will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Oh, this Sunday we'll have the second collection intended to support our diocese and newsletter, The Catholic Spirit. Thank you so much for your generosity. We prepare for the Liturgy of the Eucharist with hymn number 385, the summons number 385. Brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and all his holy church. O Lord, our God, who once established these created things to sustain us in our frailty, grant, we pray, that they may become for us now the sacrament of eternal life, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. With Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is really right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his Paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death. 
summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works. For you are called out of, for you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. indeed holy O Lord and all you have created rightly gives you praise for through your son our Lord Jesus Christ by the power and working of the Holy Spirit you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the Sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name therefore O Lord we humbly implore you with the same spirit graciously make holy this gift we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at his commands as we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and given thanks, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and James, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you, in your compassion, O merciful Father, 
gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. To the King, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, I said to your Apostle, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, to live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. For our spiritual communion prayer for those joining us online. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself fully to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. 
Number 394.
Let us pray. O oh God, who have willed that we be partakers in the one bread and the one chalice, grant us, we pray, so to live that made one in Christ, we may joyfully bear fruit for the salvation of the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Knights of Columbus will be hosting their pancake breakfast tomorrow morning from 8 to noon. Everybody's invited. Everyone is invited to come and spend some time with the Lord in our monthly festival of praise. It will be this Friday, February 11th, from 7.30 to 9 p.m. Please watch your mailbox for a letter from Bishop Cecchio coming to you this week, announcing the 2022 Bishop's Annual Appeal. Through your assistance to the Bishop's Annual Appeal, you help maintain various pastoral ministries. Your gift supports the formation of our seminarians, the many pastoral and educational and charitable ministries of the Diocese of Metuchen, that would not be possible without a generous contribution from every household. Please be as generous as your means allow. Thank you so much. Please take a copy of the bulletin and visit the website for more information about the Tricky Tray, the Religious Education Summer Program, and other parish events. The Lord be with you. May mighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. We praise our God with our recessional hymn number 205, Blessed by Your Sacrifice, number 205. 